Chapter 19, Beyond the Sea, Bobby Darren, originally released as a single, Atlantic, 1958, written by Jack Lawrence and Charles Trenet. In this song, your happiness lies beyond the wide sea, and to get there you have to cross the great unknown. You're going out of bounds, and you're into the briny deep, navigating by the stars measuring longitudes and latitudes. You're the captain and you're sailing towards your nerve centre, who is waiting in the coastlands upon the rich and rosy beach. She's waiting for you there, biding her time, sitting tight. She's on the lookout for you, checking out every ship, the clipper ships, the schooners and sloops. Onwards and onwards you go, sailing over the bounding main, and off into the wild blue yonder, sailing towards your life, your final destination. You're checking your compass, your almanac, and your horoscope. The entire hemisphere is right at your command, right there in your field of vision. This is a good day if there ever was one. Round the clock, day and night, the breezes belong to you, all the waves are your friends. You're going over to the far side, above and beyond, going off limits. You've been knocking about on this voyage since forever, riding on the crest of a high rippling wave, heading for a place you never heard of. You're the skipper. Soon the fair winds blow you into the harbour, and you see the port lights. Soon you'll be approaching and coming up. You'll hit town and weigh anchor, and she's standing on the shores of everlasting gold. Soon you'll shut off from the world, linking up everlasting. On top of each other you'll kiss and embrace, every day from now on, a jolly holiday. Wonderfully brilliant and true to form, you see everything from the proper angle. You've returned to where you came from. No more casting off into a distant galaxy. No more cruising off into supernatural darkness. Never again you'll go sailing. You lay it all down and pull the shade. You quit while you're ahead. This is a French song, originally written by Charles Trenet pretty much untranslatable. It's about the sea and all the allegory that it represents. Bobby Darren could sound like anybody and sing any style. He was more flexible than anyone of his time. He could be Harry Belafonte, he could be Elvis, he could be Dion, he could be a calypso singer, he could be a bluegrass singer or a folk singer, he was a rhythm and blues singer. The guy was everybody, if anybody. But here's the thing about chameleons. If you don't watch them changing colours, they just look like an ordinary lizard. Their uniqueness lies in their transformative nature. So, more fairly, Bobby Darren was more than a chameleon. For each of his guises, he inhabited with verve and gusto, and even in repose, he just about vibrated with talent. Perhaps he threw himself into every performance because he didn't expect to live long enough to have to hold anything in reserve. Even though he died tragically young, heart weakened by rheumatic fever, he lived longer than doctors ever expected him to. Every song was sung as if it might be the last one he would ever sing. But that doesn't explain the multiple personas. Maybe that was because he had doubts about who he was, like Eric Clapton, Jack Nicholson and a surprisingly large number of others. Bobby lived in a household with a centrally placed lie. The woman he was brought up to believe was his sister was actually his mother. Impregnated at a young age outside of wedlock, hidden away as she came to term and raised with the child as a sibling. The loving mother he believed he had was actually his grandmother. That would be reason enough to go into show business. 
Some people create new lives to hide their past. Bobby knew that sometimes the past was nothing more than an illusion and you might just as well keep making stuff up. Here, Bobby is as much of a swinger as he was in Mac the Knife, but it fits him better. He doesn't feel like he's trying to fit into an older man's clothes. He doesn't start at full speed as he does on Mac. Here, the band eggs him on, and the yearning of the first chorus gives way to the razzmatazz of finger pops and grunts that are imitated in a thousand karaoke bars every night. The drummer kicks his ass uphill at every turnaround. His phrasing, especially on a pop ballad like this, is the driving wheel of the production. Time and time again, he'll slip the first few words of a line upstairs into the end of the previous line. He was very subtle and you don't realise he's doing this. But if he sang songs like this straight, it probably wouldn't reach you. He's playful. He's a playful melodist and he doesn't need words. He keeps it simple, even when he's singing about nothing. The sea, the air, the mountains, the flowers. It all floats. It never touches the ground.